Greetings Blunderheads, this is One Shot Al coming at you live with a tutorial on basic rigging. I'm using Blender 2.57B, a latest version that you can download from the Blender website as of uh, 15th of May that is, 2011, it's the latest version. They've been spitting them out about every two months now and they're due for another one. I already have a file opened up. I'm not going to go over a lot about models, but I have a model loaded. This particular one is Zinzin. Zin. Uh, it's available free at daz3d.com if you're interested. You have to download their software though to, to get your hands on it. If you have your hands on it and you haven't bothered to download their software you have an illegal copy but that's between you and the feds all right so let's get started a couple of basics about the model um, it should be well constructed it should be mirrored that is to say this imaginary line right here this green line the y axis would divide her in half and if you did then everything on her left side should match up with her right side vertus for vertus that way later on when we're adding bones automatically to her hands arms and toes or whatever on one side of her and blenders adding them to the other side automatically the bones will match up with the mesh one other thing is that the origin for your model, while it doesn't have to be at zero, 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 it's a good idea to have it there already. Should you decide later to put it into a game, uh, if you don't have it at zero, 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 and say the origin's at her belly button, then there's a chance you might fall through your floor. But that's a different tutorial altogether. I have the cursor at zero 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 right now. Let's turn off the manipulator, and I'm going to add a armature. Blender will add the armature right at the cursor. So you go to your Add menu, scroll down to Armature, scroll over to Single Bone, and left click on that, and we're ready to start rigging. Uh, a couple things we have to adjust first. We want to see the armature through Zin Zin. So we're going to go to the object data menu, which is this little guy right here with the arms and legs. Left click on that and scroll down a little bit here to x ray and left click in that, turn that function on. One item of note. If you don't have an armature uh, inserted into the scene and or uh, selected, say if you had Zin Zin selected, the armature menu won't be there. And you could go nuts wondering where it's at until you figure that out. So in order to have the armature options available, you do have to be clicked on it. Okay. Next step in this rigging tutorial is to jump into edit mode. We can do that down here in the mode box. Scroll up to edit mode and left click on that. And now we have a bone that we can manipulate in 3D space. It won't change its origin which is was placed at uh, the cursor which again is at 000. zero, zero and we're ready to rig. First thing we want to do is uh, give it a name. We can name bones by going to the bone menu. A little picture of the bone. Go down to our name box which uh, Blender calls value. Uh, probably something to do with Python but it's not affecting us. We left clicking that box to name our bones. This bone is going to be called hips. You could call it anything you want, but I'm going to be trying to follow the uh, 
naming convention used by the human Mato rig. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, it's pretty advanced rig. It's really cool. It does come with Blender, but I don't have it enabled right now. And I'm just going to try and copy their names so later on I'll be accustomed to it and so will you. Alright, since these are the hips, obviously the bone has to go up. And the simplest way to do that is to click on the trunk here, press G, and then we press Z, and that forces the bone to move straight up. I'm going to stop the bone with its head, this round part there, right about at the crotch. This is the, uh, the head of the bone, by the way. This is the tail, and this is what is referred to as the trunk. I'm going to right click on the tail and size this bone by pressing G and Z again and dragging it down. Right about to the belly button, and zoom in, and I'm going to once more select the head and readjust that so that the head is further down in the crotch and leave it there for now. Later on, um, after we test parent Zin Zin to the armature and we see how the bones are making the mesh move, we may adjust that as well as any other bones we add. And adding bones is real easy. All you have to do is right click on the tail. Press E and we want to go straight up with the bone. So we're going to press Z and we're going to left click to lock that in place. We could have extruded a bone from here if we needed one, but that bone wouldn't have a parent. It would be just pulled out and pretty much lost in space on its own. This bone by default, if it's extruded from the tail, is parented to this bone and will follow this chain of commands, so to speak. Uh, whenever I move the hip bones, whatever bones are in its chain will follow. So we will be, of course, extruding from the tail as we go up and from the tail to her arms and from the tail uh, to her neck and head. And I don't know what the word for it right now, but can, I think the word is conversely, conversely speaking. Once we start adding legs, they'll point down and will extrude from the tail all the way to the toes and those will uh, move in the opposite direction. Enough said about that. Let's give this bone a name. This one will be Spine. Let me type that in real quick in the name box. Click on the tail. Press E for extrude. And Z to take a bone up and take that tail right up to about the middle of her arms. So when we extrude both ways, then we'll be going right down the arms and it'll save us a step later. This bone will be called ribs. Again, this is the naming convention of the human made a rig. No particular reason on my part other than that. Now we can extrude again for her arms. We select the tail, press E. This time we press X and pull the bone right out to about her shoulder. I'm going to aim for the middle, left click to select it, or lock it in place. Right click to select it. And jump over to our name box again. since it is in the region of the shoulder it gets the shoulder name <coughs> excuse me and uh, we need to extrude another one for the other side shoulder my trick is to hide that bone real quick by pressing H right click on the tail of the ribs press E again and press X again to pull it out to where we want it about right click on it again in the trunk to give it a name 
jump over here to the name box. This one is named shoulder dot right. Press ALT if you hid your bone and press H. That pops our bones back up and we have our left shoulder here, our right shoulder here. And you notice they don't match yet. That's all right. Uh, we're going to turn on the X axis mirror function right now by pressing T on your keypad. If your tool menu isn't already uh, popped up, then that will make it pop up. We're going to scroll down to our X axis mirror function here and left click on that. Here's a, another hidden feature. It's only available when you have an armature in the scene and it's only available when the armature is in edit mode. So that's one more thing you could kind of go nuts looking for if you didn't know that. Okay, so now we're ready to extrude more bones. Blender will extrude them on one side over here as we extrude them on the other for us and that's a cool thing. Let's press T, hide the tool menu. Let's right click on her left shoulder. I like working on the left side first for some reason. Maybe because it's on the right side of the screen. I don't know. Let me get a drink of coffee here. I'm kind of dry right now. I don't know why. And uh, let's see, before we go any further, I'm going to give it the jiggle test. I have the tail selected, I have the net bones named, but I don't know if I have a typo for sure. Sometimes you get a typo and it will screw you up. So to do the jiggle test, you simply click the tail and watch this bone while, when I do that. Click the tail and then you press G. And that is the jiggle test. If the names match, then Blender will match the coordinates of this bone to the coordinates of the bone that you're manipulating. That's why I wasn't worried about pulling this one out too far. And it will do it automatically. If it wasn't named correctly, there would be a typo and Blender wouldn't match the bones up and you know there would be a problem and you need to stop fix the name and then move forward all right let's extrude some more bones we're going to extrude one for her upper arm with the tail selected right there and pressing E and X we pull one out to about her elbow and left click to lock that in place we're going to right click on this so we can go to our name box, left click in that box. This one is called upper underscore arm dot left. And the other one is upper underscore arm dot right. Do the jiggle test and their names right we can move forward while it's still selected there press e x and we have an arm for her forearm i should say a bone for her forearm you drag it out to about the wrist right click on it so we can name it name it forearm dot left same for the other side forearm dot right quick jiggle test and they both moved so they should be right and the nice thing about that is I already have the tail selected so I can just quickly press E for extrude X to drag it on the X axis jump over here give it a name hand dot left and select that one by manipulating the screen over there go to the name box type in hand dot right alright so now we have our torso here so to speak and we have our arms that's a bit of work if this is your first time you may want to save your file at this time and I make a practice of saving my files on a regular basis 
just in case I crash or uh, uh, let's see once in a while uh, Windows will make me download a, uh, a patch and shut off my computer on its own while I'm away and I didn't save my file there's and come back and I've lost an hour's worth of work so saving your file is a good thing if you're not familiar with it you can do it in blender by simply pressing F2 and choosing a file where you want to save it I have a blender dedicated to blender 2.57 B Zin Zin I've been messing with her and playing with her textures and whatnot and I have a file just for the tutorial blends ready to go I'm gonna left click on that to save it and we don't have to give it a name but if you do it uh, will tell you what it is later so it won't hurt tutorial on uh, rigging is what I'm going to choose then I'll give it a suffix number press enter and blenders ready to save it the neat thing about giving it a suffix number is that as we go along we can increase that number by pressing plus on the number pad and blender will automatically keep adding numbers and if we want we can press minus on the number pad and subtract them and that way we won't save over our old files we'll create new files as we go along and we can always backtrack and you know if you have a big mistake that you can't fix and you don't know where it screwed up you can backtrack to your last f saved file and start over it's a good thing to have alright let's take a view from the top by pressing 7 on the number pad we can see that just like in drafting class uh, there's a front view where everything lines up but that's one on the number pad but if you take a view from the front they don't line up now we could uh, keep going forward and move at a neck bone and a head bone right now or we could stop and adjust this which is what I like to do and then work on the hands which is another thing I like to do in this uh, uh, stage of the game it's my own little way of keeping uh, abreast of what I'm doing so to adjust this we simply right click on what you might call the shoulder bone which is right in front of the shoulder from the top view by pressing 7 on the number pad we're going to press G and Y and take it straight back right to about the middle left click to lock it in place and jump over here to the elbow right click on that press G and Y again and slide that back to about the middle of the arm there like so move our screen over to grab hold of the wrist and I don't know about your mouse but if you want to move your screen with my mouse it has a middle scroll button I press shift and hold it and then I press the middle mouse button down and I can lock in on it and move it everywhere I want it will vary from mouse to mouse but you can figure that out on your own I'm sure so let's move our wrist we could move it straight forward by using the GY it's pretty close to where the wrist should be and then we can get hold of the hand bone here the tail on there and move that this is not going to move straight forward because it actually needs to come back into the hand just like so and going to position position it right about there leaving room for the finger bones and the knuckle bones I'm going to point it at the middle finger for GP and right click it and lock it into place and I'm taking a look again that after adjusting the uh, wrist this is 
just a hair off center on the middle so we can move that real quick select it by right clicking press G and then press Y to take it straight back as long as you're in top view and you're moving it straight back you can press Y and uh, knock it in there and of course everything on the other side of the screen is matching up which is a good thing so zooming in on our hand and keeping an eye on the clock uh, we need to add some bones to the hand. This is probably the hardest part of rigging an armature for a model because it involves so many bones. You can't make any shortcuts here. Um, well, maybe one or two, but this will take a bit of time and most of the tutorial, as a matter of fact. So if you're not ready to dig in, then you better get ready. Had to light a cigarette there. We're going to utilize the hand bone here from the front view, which you may notice doesn't line up with our model too good yet, but we are still going to use it after adjusting it to make some more bones for the hand, uh, the palm, and then extrude from the palm bones, finger bones, and one more extra for the thumb bone. And divide those up, give them some names, and hopefully in a sequence that creates as little work as possible. So right clicking on that hand bone again, let's take a look at the front. And it doesn't quite look like it's in the middle of the wrist. Now we could adjust that by just selecting on the wrist and taking that up but you notice if you do that the hand bones gets a screwy angle that's the last thing we want right now is um, screwy angles in our hand bones in the, in the, the versions 2.4 of blender bone roll was kind of a nightmare and once you had bone roll going on some bones you'd you'd be hard-pressed to uh, get them back out and make your model work and, well enough said about that so what I want to do right now is move this bone and the wrist and do it in a fashion in which I won't get any bone roll you scroll over here to our bone menu and there's our bone roll already listed for you right now it's at zero if I had moved this and locked it in place it, it would it would show you that there uh, this one doesn't have any yet that one doesn't have any yet that's cool so to stay away from bone roll simply right click on the bone and we're gonna move the whole hand up that forces the wrist up and keeps our bone facing straight up which we want for the most part for our fingers and then we want the bones to straighten up the thumbs a special case so we'll have to deal with the thumb on its own alright enough said about that now we can start making bones to make the rest of the hand the easiest quickest way to do that is right click on the bone uh, the hand bone we're going to make a copy of that by pressing shift, holding that down, and then pressing D once. And we have a bone. We can move it over here with our mouse. Position the tail over the index knuckle. On the left click to lock it into place. You might notice this dotted line right there. That indicates the parent, which right now is the forearm. Um, we don't want palm bones or finger bones or anything like that to backtrack all the way to the forearm at this point in time. We want them to backtrack to the hand. So we're going to change the parent on that real quick by first selecting the bone you want to change the parent on, pressing shift and holding that down, and right click on the bone you want it to be a parent parented to 
and then we press control and hold that down and press P and that brings up our parent menu giving you two choices right now connected or keep offset if we choose connected the bones gonna jump to the tail of the hand bone we don't want that we want it to stay right where it's at so we'll uh, select keep offset left click left click there mouth is getting dry again I don't know why I drank a lot of water today so there we go um, you see the dotted line now it's pointing at the hand tail that means that this bone is parented to that and if we make any copies of this which we're, I'm planning on doing then it will copy the parent same way that when I copied this it copied the parent uh, to the forearm and speaking of the hand bone let's press H right now and hide that and let's click on our forearm if you like press H and hide that real quick by and just simply press H and it will hide the bones for you and that way you can work with a cleaner surface so to speak so we're going to add some more bones here, pa parented to the hand bone, uh, simply by pressing shift and holding it, and pressing D once. You might have noticed that I didn't give these any names. I'm going to skip over that part right now. It's uh, a time burner, and I wanted to keep this tutorial down to about an hour. So let's make another copy, press shift, hold it, press D once and move this one over to the knuckle or position the tail of the bone over the knuckle that's about where we would want it we're not going to worry about the back right now make another copy by pressing shift and D position it for the pinky and we're going to make one more copy for the thumb and just place it over the thumb roughly we could do ourselves a favor and put the tail right over the fingernail so later on when we move that around it all we have to do is move it straight down all right that's our palm bones I'm skipping the naming part to keep the uh, length of the tutorial down if you want you could go back and start renaming these all on your own uh, as far as I know it's really not needed they're there basically as far as I can tell uh, gonna hide these real quick so we can see what we're doing on both sides they're there basically to hold the hand vertices if we had simply put uh, just fingers in the finger bones and only had one hand bone in the hand when we did our automatic assignment and and went back to move our fingers it would end up moving half the hand and that's not what we want we want the hand to stay where it's at while we move the fingers all right let's just position these a little bit better we're in the top view so we can't get any roll on the bones if we just move them around a hair uh, from the top and getting the uh, the heads in a, a nice curved line is what I'm doing here so that way when the automatic assignment uh, function kicks in again it will keep that assignment in a nice arc thus uh, not interfering with the wrist bone uh, assignment alright we'll call that good and then we can extrude for the fingers same procedure as before we right click on the tail we press E this time we're just going to drag it out straight to our fingernails left click to lock it in place repeat it's like washing your hair and rinsing it wash rinse repeat I think they do that just to sell more cream rinse. Select our tail. 
drag it out by pressing E left click to lock it in place and we have our finger bones these do need to be named you will uh, want to know these where these bones are in your menus over here we have a big menu right there uh, the scene menu it contains everything that is in this scene and uh, for the record uh, everything that is on every uh, layer in here if you want to find those bones easy later you would go there uh, these uh, you might have a problem right now wondering which one it is but it does have the hand prefix in there so that wouldn't be too hard all right let's give them some names we're in the bone menu we go to our name box and of course we're going to call the pinky pinky left and this one is ring that left I'm kind of veering away from uh, the human meta rig naming conventions here because in their names they had the suffix finger on all of them and that's too much typing for a little short tutorial so I'm just skipping that part that's our fingers named and our thumb we move our screen over here start with the thumb over on this side thumb dot right index dot right middle dot right ring dot right right click select left click in the box pinky dot right press enter and looking at it quick I did I missed the period so I'm gonna get rid of that typo right now and then we can do the jiggle test since we added a bunch of names we might have other typos I didn't catch. Right click on the bones to select them. Press G and move it around and you can see that they're all moving. That means that they're all named correctly. If there was a bone that wasn't named the same as the other side at this point in time, uh, it would move and then we could stop and fix the typo. And save ourselves a lot of work. Right, the next step is to even up the fingernails. Since Blender's uh, Zin Zin's arm doesn't come straight out at a 90 degree angle, but the bones are, we need to move them down a little bit. Especially the pinky. Thumb's a special case. So let's start with the pinky, but let's go over here to our armature object data menu scroll down to x-ray and turn that off for a minute now we can see where the bones are in the hand and center them up a hair better as we're moving along it gives us some visual aid there it's real simple to do since we're in the top view and directly over the fingernails and we go to our side view to see it better we right click on the tail we press G and then Z so we can take it straight down get it right about there in the fingernail is good enough go to the next one G and Z left click to lock it in place G and Z that one's just a hair out left click to lock it in place right click to select G Z and move the mouse down there is one trick to this if you'd like to know it if you hold shift down while you are moving bones it'll give you the ability to micro adjust it if I do it without shift it moves real fast I press shift down and it slows it down so right click to lock that back into place that's a cool feature if you're really trying to be precise we don't have to be that precise but it is a nice feature to know I'm looking at the rest of the bones to see how they center up. They're a little off, of course. That's par for the course. Let's turn on our x-ray again. 
grab hold of uh, the knuckle on the pinky and turn our x-ray off and looking at that the knuckle needs to come down so that we can center it center the bone on the finger better and again same procedure press G and Z and we just pull it down left click to lock it in place and that's centered better it could move a hair this way on the Y axis so we press G and Y center it a little bit better from there turn on x-ray grab hold of the next bone the next knuckle turn off x-ray I can see right from here that it needs to go over a notch to the left side of the screen left click to lock that into place it could go up a little bit to even it up a hair a little better it's not perfect it doesn't have to be perfect it should just be close the next bone same procedure it's kind of hard to see it through the finger webs here but we get a good view of it and move that up to where it looks even uh, from the top and the bottom and on the sides that's good turn x-ray back on select our knuckle turn x-ray off to see where the bones at in the hand press G and Z right now to center it like this way from the top it looks pretty good and we'll call those fingers good as far as being centered we could add roll to these by the way but that's a time burner and I'm going to show you how to add roll on the thumb which is more important we'll skip that for these right now uh, after watching this tutorial you may consider it you may not first time messing around with rigging a model that you might not care just to get some practice in enough said about that only thing left to do now is divide the bones uh, blender doesn't have a function yet where you can divide by three blender 2.49 B did and previous versions but the 2.5 series doesn't have it yet so we'll settle for dividing by twice a couple times and we do that by selecting our bone we want divided we press W on our keypad and our specials menu comes up and one of those uh, options there is subdivide left click that and now we have two bones but we need three so we got to do one of them twice I do the front one do the same for the next one select the bone press W subdivide select the next one press W subdivide and again this will change the names of the bones a little bit there's ring 000 this is 001 and the naming conventions uh, could have been better I don't know if I would if I did it the opposite way whether it would have been better or not and divided these maybe I'll try it next time but it's not that important in this stage of the game now you notice that maybe if you can see it on YouTube uh, they didn't blur the movie too much there's a little shadow there for the knuckle coincidentally the knuckle just matched up with it they did the same on the middle finger here can't really see it on the ring finger or the pinky but since these two match I'm gonna call it good that way uh, when the fingers bend it's going to bend on the knuckle and we don't have to do any more work now we can move on to the thumb bone which I've been saying is a special case and that special case is of course that the thumb is turned at an angle looking at it from here it looks like it's about 45 degrees offset from the other fingers these bones are kind of all facing straight up and so is this one 
The fingers here are all kind of facing straight up, but the thumb isn't. And Blender knows which side of this is facing straight up. So later on, when we want to tell it to move, and we want to adjust all these little numbers in pose mode, if this doesn't match up the way it's supposed to to the thumb, that would screw us up. I haven't really gotten that particular lately, but I have had times where I wanted the fingers to grab hold of uh, like a bar. Uh, my P4 woman on uh, the treadmill manipulating her fingers just so, uh, a notch at a time so it would look right and look good. And that's where that function kicks in. You want to be able to know that these bones are pointed in the right way so to change the roll on this thumb right here we can do it two ways we can rotate it uh, manually or we can just change the roll in the roll box the thumb looks like it's about 45 so if we click in here you notice that it changes the roll of the bone in increments of one but I guess to me it was about 45. So to save some time, we can left click in that box, type in 45, and press enter. And now the roll of that bone, let's hide this one real quick. The roll of that bone matches the thumb. It doesn't quite match up everywhere else, but that's what we're gonna fix next. We'll grab hold of the knuckle press G and Y we can take it straight back into the hand so to speak left click to lock it in place let's select on this bone and press shift and hold that press H now when we jump to the front view by pressing one on the number pad it's the only bone in our view it's the only bone we have to deal with and we can manipulate it better Let's move this tail down to the thumb, close there, turn off x-ray under the object data menu to get a better view of where it's at. Now we can see it's just going into the nail, right about there is cool. Turn it back on and grab hold of the knuckle, so to speak. When you turn off x-ray, press G and Z again and tuck it right into the mesh. This, can, this one's kind of guesswork, but a lot of it is guesswork to start with, to position them. It looks pretty good, and it's ready for dividing. And press W, we've already been down this road. Select it, and press W and select it, and we have our three bones for the thumb. This knuckle here though, uh, if you can see the shadow again, if YouTube didn't blur it too much, is not matching up the knuckle on the mesh. So we'll just, from the top view, we'll match it up there. We'll call this one good. It's a little hard to tell from where the knuckle is. There's no shadow there, but that will probably be good. From the front view, I'm uh, pressing one on the number pad. You can see that it's a little low. So I'll press G and Z and tuck it back, take it up a little bit and manipulate it. This one is not quite center. I'll just manipulate that center and this one center just a little bit from this view. And we'll call that good. Looks pretty good. This could come down just a hair, making all your little micro adjustments. And then later on, that thumb will move like a thumb. And should we decide we want to manipulate it again in our pose mode, which is right there, later on we can hit all these buttons and move it in um, micro uh, blender units, so to speak. Let's press ALT. Let's press H. That pops up all our other bones. Let's press 1, let's press A, desec deselect them all, let's save this by pressing F2 and we can press the plus sign on the number pad 
the red box went away that means we're not overwriting any files and we can press enter blender went right back to the file I saved in before which is cool um, it's a feature that they didn't have on the last one automatic all the time and we have our file saved now we can add a neck bone and a head bone and since you are a little bit familiar with what's going on here I'll do it kind of quick and to demonstrate that this is not a really a time-consuming process it actually goes pretty quick if you know what you're doing all right what I did there was I hid these bones I right clicked on the tail of the ribs so I knew I had it pressed E for extruding press Z took it straight up I already had the tail selected automatically pressed E again and took that straight up by pressing Z we have our two bones for our neck and head jump over to the bone menu go in the name box type in head and that bones almost done do the same for neck and that one's almost done the only thing left is to check from the side view to see uh, how close it isn't in place so to speak uh -huh. and of course it isn't it never will be and we need to move that bone backwards but you might notice uh, when you go to move it it's connected to the ribs we don't want to move the ribs it's in a good spot right now I'm going to veer away again from the human meta rig on, on the human meta rig this is pulled back a little bit but I like it where it's at so I'm going to right click on that I'm going to go here in the bone menu, a little bone there, right there, and here is where it tells you if it's connected or not. This tells you the rib, or I mean the parent, it tells you the parent, the rib is the parent bone, which is what it's supposed to be, and these tell you the layers. You can move it to other layers, by the way, later on if you want to hide them permanently and just get them out of your sight then you can do that so we're going to left click on the box here and in theory it should be disconnected but it's not for some reason it still wants to drag around the shoulder so we're dealing with a bug probably uh, because the parent is listed as rib and it says disconnected here and now it's disconnected all right did it twice I could have used the shortcut key which is ALT hold it and P and clear parent or disconnect the bone which is another way of doing it but we got it disconnected by just doing this twice over here I probably moved it faster than blender told itself it's saving a lot of information right now automatically and you can get a, a head of blender sometimes if you go too fast okay let's take a look at the side view again and see where we need to move it We've got a bunch of bones on our way in our way now make sure I have the neck bone selected I'm gonna press shift down and select the head bone and still holding shift down press H and we'll hide all the other bones and we can see what we're doing since we're in the side view I can only all I have to do now is press G to move the bone and it will stay in the Y axis on its own don't have to worry about that position the tail about center of the neck and left click to lock it in place the head needs to come up select that press G and move that into about the middle of the neck about to where it's going to move start moving the neck we'll call that good go to our front view press ALTH press A to deselect give it a quick save press F2 press plus on the number pad press enter 
and that saves and we can move forward without losing our work. The next part is probably the easiest, adding legs. And a real quick way to do that is just to make a duplicate of some bones that we have handy. We could go to our tool menu by pressing T on the, num on the keypad and scroll down to add bones here or duplicate or delete and use those functions. Uh, reading the shortcut there, it looks like they are ready to go. You'll find some things in the menus right now that are still in work and they won't function that's all right I'm gonna press T and hide it you could have used the tool menu but it's not the quickest way the quickest way is to simply collect uh, select a bone by right clicking on it press shift and press D once we have a copy that could be for her left thigh we're in the front view by the way so we can't screw up the bones on the uh, X axes I'm going to make a copy of this one. It's already selected. Pop it over for her right thigh. Left click to lock it in place. Jump to our bone menu. The name box. And call this one. Thigh.right. Do the same. For the other side. Thigh.left. Do the jiggle test right click to lock them back in place now all we have to do is point it down to do that it's simple press R and we're going to do a 180 and press enter and we're good to go I should point out that in doing that we added roll to this bone there's 180 for this one and negative 180 for this one in my experimentations with Blender 2.5 series so far, it hasn't been a problem. It's something to keep an eye on, though. Just for your info, it hasn't been a problem, but we keep an eye on it. So let's press G and then Z and move our bones down, just like so. Maybe G, X to center it a little bit. And notice there's no dotted lines there I want to give it a parent I want it parented to the hips so that'll be the second bone that I select or I should say that will be the last bone in the bones I select to parent it because later on you'll find out you can add more than one bone at a time to a, a parent bone but I don't want to digress too much there so we just right click select this press shift and hold it and select the hips press control hold it press P select offset keep offset and we got the dotted line there if you can see it on YouTube if it's not blurred out and blender automatically did this one for us cool function keeping track of what we're doing and leaving us alone to just rig okay later on uh, we're gonna have to add some bones here to pick up the rest of these hips look how many vertices are there we only have a few bones here if you remember I mentioned on the hand bone select on that and press period on the number pad to zoom in real quick we had to had uh, we had to add palm bones here to pick up the hand otherwise this whole hand would move if you moved a finger. By the same token, we don't have any bones here to pick up this side of the hip or this side of the hip. Since, in theory, if you're doing a bottle for the first time, we don't know exactly how it's going to work, we don't need to add a bone right now. Uh, I always do a test parenting to find out how it's working and, with, and we'll do that one here and then we'll add some bones to, uh, to make them move better but that's just for your info so we have our thigh here's our knee uh, we're gonna move that down to the knee 
and left click to lock it in place. I did not roll, uh, worry about bone roll too much there. We don't have a lot of intricate bones on the bottom here to worry about. So I'm going to press E again. This time I'm going to press Z just to yank it straight down real quick. And this will be our shin bone. We'll give it a name and just call it shin. And shin on the other one. And do the jiggle test. And no typos. Press 3 on the number pad go into side view to see how it matches up and zoom in and this could move a little bit over to the ankle here by pressing G and left click to lock it in place since we're in the side view it's good to note that you can't mess it up on the uh, the Y axis it'll move straight back and forth by default we were a little bit twisted and we moved it like this then then it wouldn't be moving right right click to lock it back in place there so as long as we're in a orthographic uh, projection view so to speak they'll move correctly same for the knee that only needs to come back this time I'm going to use Y because I know from the front it's right about where the knee shadow was I'm going to click that right about there and uh, have to live with the fact that this is sticking out a little bit. There's no good way around that. Uh, we'll just live with that and test, it, test the way the armature moves later. Can't get it perfectly centered on that one. So enough said about that. Let's add a foot. Right clicking on our tail here of our shin bone press E drag a bone out this doesn't have to be perfect because we got to pick up toes down here I used to mess around a lot with trying to keep the bone straight and I just I pretty much gave up on that because on the foot bones there it's, it's not going to matter as much unless you're a, got a foot fetish and you want the toes to move just so so I moved that real quick over by pressing G and X. I got into that view by pressing 7 and 2 on the number pad a couple times to rotate it. And these need names. So we'll give it a name. Foot dot left. And foot dot right. We'll save our work. Press F2 press plus sign on the number pad increasing our suffix number by one so we don't save over our old file and save a blunder in a blender file have by accident press enter and we're saved only thing left to do now is uh, add some toe bones for control of the toes a little bit you want some control so I'm going to select this press W bring up our special menus and subdivide now we have something for the front of the foot that will be dedicated to the toes I pressed 3 on the number pad to go to the side view real quick press G and then just moved it over to the front of the foot so it will uh, pick up the, the toes here only I already know from experience that that bone's kind of small to pick up all the toes. So I'm going to bring it out somewhat. I'm not worry too much about the bone row too much. Because the foots are only going to, you know, rotate a little bit and bend a little bit. And like I said, unless you have a foot fetish and you want to see the toes wiggle, we don't have to worry about it. We could later adjust the vertices to make it bend a little bit better if we want. All right, so we're done. Technically, we're done. I'm going to press A a couple times to select and deselect. I'm going to save it again out of habit. Add a number to the suffix. Press Enter press tab to get out of edit mode 
So we can parent Zin Zin by right clicking on her, move closer to get a better grip of the armature, press shift, hold it, right click on the armature, back her up for funsies, press control, hold that, press P, and our parent menu pops up giving us op op um, options for parenting Zin Zin to the armature. I've played around with these this armature, deform, empty groups, and envelope weights, and I really doesn't, don't know why they're there. I, uh, they don't work for me. Uh, the human meta rig is saying use uh, automatic weights, which is what I've always used. Used to call, be called bone heat in the 2.4 series. Check out my P4 woman sometime if you like. Uh, I used bone heat to assign the vertices and that model came out pretty good. So let's left click on this and <coughs> excuse me, clear my throat. While it's assigning vertices there, I'm going to light me a cigarette. Again, Zinzin is available at daz3d.com. Uh, you got to download their software. Uh, they have some free versions, which is cool. Uh, I understand that uh, these are the guys that used to work for Poser at one point in time and had a fracas with them, I suppose, and a falling out. All right. Enough of uh, tabloid gossip. She's assigned. If uh, we want, we can backtrack right now to before we assigned vertices. And that makes it simple to correct anything that may or may not work. I have the armature selected. We we'll go to the mode box and we're going to click on pose mode. And we're going to start moving some bones around to see how it works. I have the uh, upper left arm selected. I'm going to go to object data menu. I want to turn on sticks so we can see her mesh better. And then I'm going to press R with the mouse kind of far away and move that and see how it works. That's stupendous. Maybe we should zoom in on that. Alright. R from the front view and it's moving really really good. I like that. That's great. That's one reason I kind of keep pushing Zins in here. Let's take it up and see how it looks. Looks pretty good. These guys at Daz, or actually whoever made Zins in, had a lot of experience. I don't know if you have uh, tried to rig a shoulder yet, but it's always been kind of a nightmare because the flesh here stretches a whole bunch and stretches a certain way and makes it difficult to make it look real but that looks good I know there's a couple problem spots on this model already but for the purpose of this tutorial I haven't mentioned them until now we're gonna test out her thigh here now watch what happens here remember I talked about we'll need bones later here in this area Specifically, we'll need something for the butt and something to keep a clean crease in her leg here where the thigh meets her pelvic region. Uh, watch how it moves. I have the thigh bone selected. I'm going to press R and then I'm going to press X with my mouse a little bit away so that the bone doesn't move too fast. And you can see that this thigh bone is picking up a lot of those vertices that have no bones near them. So what we'll do next is I'll pause. I'll add some bones. It's kind of a time-consuming process. 
and this tutorial's already lasted an hour I'm sure a lot of surfers have already surfed on right click to lock that back in place we're gonna have another problem area in the head I know this from experience select the bone and press R for rotation and the head bone doesn't quite pick up everything that's in the head it's not uh, blender's fault there's just not enough bones there the vertices are too far away uh, blender did its job it only assigned vertices in a certain radius around the bone uh, the way it's supposed to so it doesn't collect bones all the way down into her lower regions so we'll fix that uh, let's check out our fingers they may or may not need work we'll zoom in on that and moving the index finger it looks good I mean, I mean the middle finger. The web's moving nice. The knuckles are moving nice. There we go. The flesh on the hand isn't moving too much. Just stretching a little bit. Won't have to deal with the hands that much just to hold a gun or a sword or grab hold of uh, the hand bar on a treadmill, so to speak. If we had to, we could make her hands move weird and turn them into wings. All right, let's call this pretty good for now. I'm going to pause. I'm going to add some bones and I'm going to add some for her jaw, her lips, her eyebrows, even her ears and the side of her head and some for her neck and move my way down to her breasts and then add some bones down here and I'll be back after I do that and demonstrate how well that works. Okay, I'm back. I've added a few bones to Zin Zin. As you can see, it's kind of complex for an introductory course, but I felt that if I didn't include this part, you would be left high and dry. Uh, I added a lot of bones. I added bones for her lips her upper lips and this way we're getting two things with one bone so to speak we're picking up all those vertices that we missed um, the first time around and now her head moves and there's no vertices left behind blender's not making me a liar which is good a good sign we have a lot more control so this is a good way to go if you want to uh, keep rigging it's rather time consuming but with practice you could do this in say oh half a day it's not a lot of time to spend on a model once you have practice to uh, get an animation going more complex the model the longer it will take but the more practice you have the, uh, the faster it goes I made some adjustments while I was adding bones I moved the shoulder around just a hair it wasn't moving quite the way I liked it it's still a little bit out I can still play with it but for our point of tutorial this is good enough it looks really good for some models I've seen that I've worked hours on and never got anywhere I added some bones for her breast obviously uh, when she's walking you want some jiggle action not a lot but something that's 
resemble realism. The trick here, oops, press seven on the number pad, zoom in. Here's a trick that uh, I've used before. It's called an elbow bone. And I added that by copying this, uh, moving it over to here, reparenting it back to this bone because it was parented here, and sizing it and putting it right where the elbow's at. Now, when we move the forearm, especially from the top, we get a nice fold, uh, a nice pointed elbow. Otherwise, that would be kind of round and curved and wouldn't look good at all. It would look like some kind of rubbery man, like sort of like Candyman, which is a cool uh, rig in itself, but he avoided, uh, the guy that did that, or gal avoided the uh, issue of making it look real because making it look real is really hard so let's test it out a couple more times we have the spine selected and we're getting realistic movements here if I wanted I might be able to start posing her and make her walk but that would take another hour or two and I don't really want to start another tutorial just yet. I adjusted her legs. I don't know if I said that. But I did a lot of the adjustments on the legs by adding bones to her pelvic region. There's a trick for you. I added some right along here where the crease should be between her thigh mesh and her stomach mesh so to speak that way when the thigh bone uh, goes forward and if you're going to have her sit down you get somewhat of a nice crease there all right let's hide everything else so you can see that better that's a pretty good looking crease maybe we can see it better if uh, I go into the tool menu and click on smooth for the mesh. Alright. It's not bad at all. I've done a little bit better, but I only did this in about an hour. If you're going to get serious about modeling, you could probably expect to spend uh, days working on a model to tweak it just right. I think my P4 woman, I worked on that for a month before I put her on a treadmill. It was kind of a add as you go kind of thing. So now we got a nice crease for the front of her body, uh, the all important rear of the body. Chest that out, and we're getting nice movement there. pretty good yeah that would pass as kind of real uh, the butt bones could use a hair adjustment these right there and this one right here which of course move independently so you can give a real life movements that way and that leaves our shin which is usually a pretty simple select that and bend it a little squishy action there but we get a nice crease looks good we have our foot I didn't mess with that too much I didn't, didn't even know if it was going to work just now that's working we got our toes so if she's going to be uh, taking steps you got that bending action there for the walk cycle and all in all she's practically ready to rig and um, aside from the hour for the tutorial uh, the worst part would probably be the parenting 
that's the time consuming process I have some bones here point those out real quick for her eyebrows press shift and H and let's see what do we want here texture light her up a little bit and move that up a hair and give her a little bit of a Spock effect let's bring back the bones deselect everything by pressing A and select two this time hide them all again press G and Z and we can get some Spock action going there give her lifelike uh, facial expressions bring everything back by pressing ALTH and then shift and H again we can test out her jaw let me move the mouse away so we get better control and we're getting some uh, real life uh, movements there looks pretty good she does have an inside mouth by the way comes with the model came with teeth and a tongue and eyeballs and everything else I removed them for this tutorial because they would only be in the way uh, they're tucked away in another file somewhere bring everything back press A to deselect let's get out of texture mode for a minute or for the rest of the tutorial her lower lips are parented to the jaw her upper lip bones are parented to her head bone and that way they hold in place we can give her a snarl real easy and even move tweak her nose which is not something I wanted right now that's not a big deal if we wanted and we took the time we could go right back to the last file I saved before parenting open that up and and it would pop back up in edit mode and we could add just a couple bones for the nose to hold that in place which is what I will probably do eventually anyways I usually give her the give my models the ability to twinkle their nose like bewitched and one other item of note a heads up is that since I have bones for her eyebrows um, they will try and grab the vertices around the eye when you do the automatic assignment function and the automatic assignment function is pretty nice it will do most of the work for you but sometimes it does too much work so if you don't have uh, bones around the eye when you go to move the eyebrows it will move the eye socket as well so these are all what you call eye socket holders all around her eye socket later on when you add an eyelid and the eyeball they won't interfere with that because they'll be parented differently uh, on maybe to another armature or just two bones added to this armature won't interfere whatsoever in fact it will hold the eye socket in place just the way it is a little uh, funzy thing on her ears you want to give uh, your model the ability to look like a little elf you can add some bones to the ears it also picks up all the vertices Blender's real good on picking up vertices, but for some reason or another, I don't know why, I could add all of these bones and it could miss the ear vertice. So I gave up and just added bones there. And now it's not a problem. I got some action going in on the neck here. I added two bones here, one right and a left, to give it a little bit more control. I added some collar bones later on you may want to move the collar of bone in conjunction with her arm upper arm bone 
and give it more realistic movement because the collarbone does move a little bit when uh, you move your arm. You may want to actually add a bone back here for the shoulder blade. I've done that before, but this particular time around I didn't do it. I was in a hurry. I've been working on this tutorial for a while. I don't want to whine you to death, but I started out doing tutorials with Cam Studio <coughs> and went through the ringers on that, so to speak, finding out that it will not uh, record much more than 10 minutes without either crashing or refusing to record the audio. So I ended up downloading some cheap screen recording software and I do say cheap without naming names uh, it's given me headaches it, it seems to work at its default settings but I digress so I'm seeing a problem here maybe with uh, the belly button I don't know yet that's usually a problem area it's kind of folding over in a way I don't like. One more thing that you can add a micro adjustment to it by adding some micro bones. You may notice some hip bones here, the side of her hips, besides the butt bone there in the back. I threw these in because I noticed I moved the leg this direction, like she's going to do jumping jacks, and it scrunched all the vertices up right in this area same thing for the other side mirror action at the very least I would want her to be able to do some jumping jacks without uh, the, the mesh crunching up too much so uh, the only thing left to point out is maybe I added a pelvic bone in the, the middle of her body there pick up her crotch region along with a pelvic bone right in the front with these pelvic bones I adjusted her hip bone a little bit by raising the head up that round part at the bottom that's maybe why I got a problem with the belly button now it looks like the tail moved up as well as I was playing with it I wasn't having that earlier but there you have it a basic rig with some control bones added selected all press ALTR removes all the rotations in case you get lost there Con uh, consequently uh, if you press ALT not consequently but Similarly, if you press ALT and G, it'll remove uh, any transforms and you snap back into place for your rest pose. The hand is working the same as before. And I guess I'll sign off there. Hope the tutorial wasn't too long, but at the same time, I think I covered almost everything that you would need to get started and as long as you have a good model you should have good luck with it so I'll be continuing making tutorials if you like this one come back check it out check me out sometime uh, I'll be making this particular model walk real soon I've been waiting for blender 2.5 to get the bugs out I was anxious to try it out when the alpha version came out it crashed and crashed and crashed on me I had to give it up. I couldn't make a single animation without it crashing. And I went back to 2.49B for a while. But now they have the bugs out, or at least most of them. So I'm anxious to try it again. There's still some popping up, like I should point out envelope. I don't know if I pointed that out yet. And I can see one right now. 
there's a little bit of problem with the envelopes I don't know what it is yet but you can look at this one there's a hand envelope problem that popped up right there it's not the same size as the other side that's kind of a, going to be a headache somewhere down the road but it uh, is not affecting us as yet I don't think that'll mess up the hand but I found that if you scale the bones while you're in edit mode on this side then the envelopes on the other side grow and I had a big giant bubble here and it was picking up vertices all the way to the right side here from the hand bone that I was scaling on this side the blender was trying to duplicate the bone on this side and messed up. Little heads up there. Stay away from scaling for now until they come out with 2.58 or 2.6. Hopefully they'll have that fixed. In the meantime, I need to backtrack and wonder what I can do about this. Usually, if... Uh, can try a trick here. I tried this before. Uh, selecting all the bones and then going to envelope and scaling them and I did it the wrong direction. I tried to click it into place here by using Blender's snap function So press B for border select. Select those problem bones. Go into envelope. Press S and there it is. It's the envelopes snapped back to where they are. Another heads up there. Uh, the thumb looks a little large. But I'm going to have to let that go for now because it's time to sign off. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and hope to see you soon.